2019 was one of the greatest years in Zelda speedrunning history, in which several new discoveries broke every 3D Zelda game wide open. Except for Twilight Princess. Many of these new discoveries improved the any% percent speedruns with either massive skips or new tech that changed how the games were played, in a good way. And then there's Majora's Mask, which had a discovery that did make many speedrun categories faster, but they were much worse off because of it, both as a player and a spectator. This trick was so horrible and made the run that much more frustrating to play, you could say that it almost ruined the game. Almost. So, what was this awful glitch, and where did it come from? Its origins date back to January 16th, 2014, when one of the best glitches in Majora's Mass speedrunning was found. On that day, a glitch hunter, Indexstick, discovered a way to warp to various areas of the game early, specifically owl statues that had yet to be activated. In Majora's Mask, you'll find owl statues you could strike with your sword to activate them. These owl statues serve as quick saves on non-Japanese versions, but primarily act as warp points once you learn the Song of Soaring, which you learn pretty early on in Southern Swamp. There are 11 owl statues in the game, but one of them is not like the others. If you've played the game, you're pretty familiar with this owl statue in South Clocktown, adjacent to the Clock Tower and the entrance to West Clocktown. You can even see this owl statue from West Clocktown, except actually, that isn't the same owl statue. It is the hidden 11th owl statue that is normally inaccessible, as it's located behind the loading zone to South Clocktown. It was intended just to mimic the appearance of the real South Clocktown owl statue, but thanks to bomb hovering glitches, it is possible to access this hidden owl statue and activate it. So, now that this owl has been activated, where does it take you? In 2009, glitches and stuff discovered that when no other owl statues other than the hidden one have been activated, you can soar to... Great Bay Coast? Okay, so this statue can allow you to get to Great Bay early, but it's just much faster to just bomb chew hover over the fence. Why would speedrunners find this useful? Maybe we can change our destination after playing the song? And the game crashed. Huh. Weird. Of course, years later, Indexstick discovered that by pausing the game and changing your cursor on the map subscreen to a different location on the map, and then playing the Song of Soaring, you could warp to locations other than Great Bay, such as in front of Snowhead, Woodfall, and even the top of Stone Tower. Now, those save a lot of time and resources in a speedrun, and thus, Index Warping was born. By pausing the game and setting your cursor on the map to a location that you already visited, the game sets a value known as a warp index depending on where your cursor is. As it turns out, the bytes in memory that track where your cursor on the pause screen map is shared with the warp indexes when the Song of Soaring map pops up. But when we look at this diagram made by Fash, another glitch hunter, we can see that the pause map points do not correspond to the actual locations they point to when warping to the hidden owl. In addition, the Z and R button cursors on the left and right side of the map subscreen also point to warp indexes, although these ones are special. And it's not because warping to one of these softlocked the game, it's because the respective warp indexes are negative 1 and 11, and if you cancel the warp and then pause again, putting your cursor over Z again will subtract 1 from the current warp index, while R adds 1. This means that if you keep on repeating this process over and over, you can get warp indexes far out of the intended range of 0 through 10, and when that happens, things get a little weird. Later that day, SVA, a Japanese Zelda speedrunner, decided to keep on increasing the warp index value until something interesting happened. But all that happened was that the game crashed after a while. Many years would pass before anyone would mess with stacking the warp indexes again, as it appeared to be useless. For now. Meanwhile, index warping by itself was incredibly versatile, allowing for runners to warp to faraway locations without needing to visit them prior, 
and it is still a staple in Majora's Mask speedrunning to this day. Eventually, someone was going to experiment with increasing the warp index values again. And sometime between 2014 and 2018, the speedrunner, glitch hunter, and community leader, Full Grown Gaming, decided to mess with it a little bit. Eventually, he reached warp index value 30, and the results were unlike anything seen before. The soar destination was yellow-green, followed by some glitch text. This was the first known instance of text overflow, a glitch with unknown potential that would ravage the Majora's Mask community in due time. In November 2018, Fash decided to look deeper into the glitch and essentially rediscover this property of continuously increasing or decreasing the warp index value, how it affected the game's memory, and how to prevent it from crashing the game. When the warp index value is outside of its intended range of values, it starts pulling garbage data from other parts of memory and rewriting it to the message content where the warp to x location here text box is written. In some cases, the text box data pulled has so many characters that it doesn't even fit in the text box anymore, leaking into other nearby parts of memory, leading to some oddities such as the bomber's notebook opening. Flash forward to April 2019, where Glitch Hunter Exodus had an interesting hypothesis. What if you could use the index warp text overflow to open the debug menu? The debug menu in Majora's Mask is essentially a full-blown inventory editor, where you could use it to write any item, song, upgrade, rupee amount, and key items like boss remains into your inventory. That last part is huge, because if you could access the debug menu using text overflow, you could give yourself all four boss remains instead of completing the four temples, the oath to order to reach the moon at the end of the game, and the fierce deity mask to completely trivialize the final boss fight against Majora. In May 2019, Fashion Exodus worked to find a method to manipulate the game's memory by performing various actions in the game, along with a warp index value that would correlate with a pocket in memory which would pull up the debug menu and allow the game to be saved. The results were promising, but unrealistic. Not only did the setup require quite a bit of traveling out of the way to obtain the Goron and Zora masks, but you needed a warp index value of 8037. This meant that you would need to play the Song of Soaring over 8,000 times. Yeah, not quite what they were looking for speedrun-wise. But it was a start! Oh boy, was it a start. Over the summer, Exodus, Fash, and Mr. Cheese would work on creating a setup for the debug menu that would save time in an actual speedrun. Using their combined knowledge and teamwork, they unleash an absolute doozy of a setup. One that would certainly bring the any% percent record below one hour, but the game would never be the same afterwards. On August 16th, 2019, Exodus released a YouTube video going over a setup that required only a two-lettered file name, seven bombs, a Deku nut, and the Song of Soaring, along with the Hidden Owl. This setup was nowhere near as complex as the previous one, but it had some precise moments, and only required a warp index value of 73, which means that the Song of Soaring must be played 63 times. That's nowhere near 8,000, but 63 times is still a lot. 11 minutes of the speedrun would be spent playing the Song of Soaring and slowly increasing the warp index value. Add this on top of the 20 minute opening sequence before Link becomes human again, and you have transformed one of the coolest Zelda any% percent speedruns, previously packed to the brim with awesome tricks and sequence breaking, into one where the adventure and action has been replaced with a lengthy glitch setup and tedious menuing. It was a novelty that quickly wore off, but I wish that was the worst part. In reality, what made this new any% percent route so awful was the platform that the run was performed on. Wii U Virtual Console. For several years, 
Majora's Mask speedrunners did their runs on the Wii Virtual Console release, as it had eliminated the intense lag from Nintendo 64 and had faster loads. There were still some downsides, such as the game being slightly more crash-prone and worse stick sensitivity, but it had significantly more advantages that made it the superior platform. Unfortunately, one of these trade-offs made the new Any% percent route impossible on Wii. You see, the Majora's Mask debug menu required the D-pad to navigate the various options, which isn't a problem on N64, but for the Wii Virtual Console release, the D-pad controls aren't mapped to any of the buttons. All the D-pad does is toggle the mini-map on and off, like the L button on the N64. Okay, so if the run can't be done on Wii VC, then we just have to run on N64. No big deal. Wrong! If you try to use text overflow to bring up the debug menu, the game will crash before you even reach Warp Index 73. The GameCube Zelda Collection isn't an option either, since the debug menu isn't even in this port. And since emulators were not allowed on the leaderboard at the time, this left only the Japanese Wii U Virtual Console as the only official release where this route would work. And oh boy does this version reek. The visuals are a huge downgrade from Wii. The load times between areas are way slower, the debug menu on this looks like absolute pixel diarrhea, and the input delay. Oh. God, the input delay makes this version a speedrunner's nightmare. Not even playing on a CRT prevented it from barely being tolerable. It made frame-perfect tricks very difficult, especially pause buffering. Runners who ran this new Any% percent route didn't even bother with some tricks such as the Happy Mask Salesman cutscene skip at the beginning of the run, a trick that saved over a minute and was a common early game reset point if you failed it. Even with the loss of HMS cutscene skip, the time saved from abusing the debug menu more than made up for it. On August 17th, 2019, Enop would be the first person to complete a run using the debug menu, lowering his own world record from 1 hour 15 minutes 29 seconds to a pretty sloppy 5402. While many question whether this glitch should even be allowed, it was ultimately permitted as it merely required an elaborate glitch setup as opposed to an external cheat code or device. And thus, Majora's Mask speedrunners went out to buy a Wii U. And the misery ensued. Over the next month, Enop would trade the world record back and forth with other top runners, such as Bonuru, Full Grown Gaming, Majin Phil, and Pope Squidward. In that one month, the novelty quickly wore off, as the Wii U was just that awful to play on. But don't take my word for it. Let's listen to what Majin Phil had to say about it in September 2019, when he flew out to LA to showcase any percent for CLG speedrunning to tackle kids cancer marathon. This console is just a giant piece of garbage. Inconsistent pause buffering renders every single cutscene skip almost useless. You can't do them. It has horrible lag in certain areas. I'll actually like show you one part in this run that has insane lag. Loading zones to go to different areas take longer. There's a darkness filter on Wii U VC for all virtual console games. It just looks bad. Like there's li literally some parts in the run that you can't even see. Just holding straight forward, you can't walk in a straight line. Even shield turning, which is supposed to be consistent, is impossible in some situations. This cutscene loses 15 seconds to lag just because Wii U. You know what's great? I went and bought a club pack of AA batteries for this stupid speedrun because you have to use the Wii mode. You have to walk straight, but there's no notches on the freaking iPad, so you can't do it properly. So walking straight's like actually like one of the hardest strats in the game. Oh, here I can put it up to my mic. This thing vibrates for two minutes during the Giants cutscene. Wait, put it on. Put it on the table. Let it vibrate on the table. Should I? Okay. It literally does this for two minutes. You have to turn around or the lag just its worse than the other cutscene. Congrats on playing Song of Soaring. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Eventually, on September 10th, Enop would lower the world record down to a 48.32, beating Pope's record by over 23 seconds. And as a display of absolute dominance, Enop smashed his classic controller he used for Wii U, confident that no one would beat his record. People had already begun to move on from the Wii U because it was just that unfun. 
The leaderboards were also split between platforms, further disincentivizing Wii U competition. Any percent wasn't the only category to be completely uprooted by the debug menu shenanigans either. Access to the debug menu led to major time save in other categories, such as All Mask and 100%. While you could just give yourself any item you needed in those, the requirements for those categories demanded that certain items be obtained from their intended locations at some point in the run. This led to an honestly very cool route for 100% in particular, which abuses the debug menu to cut out annoying parts, like depositing 5,000 rupees into the bank for a piece of heart, which is made trivial by giving yourself 9,999 rupees, as well as giving yourself dungeon stray fairies and skullshulas from the spider house to get the rewards quicker. But by far, the most interesting thing obtained in the debug menu in this route is the sun song. The Sun Song is one of the songs from Ocarina of Time you could learn, and was used to change the time of day straight to sunrise at 6am, or to sunset at 6pm, whichever was going to happen sooner. It was left over as an inaccessible song in Majora's Mask, as the Song of Double Time effectively had the same purpose. However, there is one property of the Sun Song that sets it apart in this game. Unlike the Song of Double Time which instantly jumps to 6 in the morning or evening, the Sun Song speeds up time until it reaches 6 o'clock. The speed up can also be cancelled when entering a new area or when a cutscene plays. One area in particular where this is abused is on the night of the first day, where at 2.30am, aliens descend onto Romani Ranch, and you'd normally need to defend the barn until they disappear at 5.30am. The Sun Song allows this entire sequence to be cheesed, because if you play the Sun Song and then continuously pause and unpause the game until 5.30, the aliens won't be able to reach the barn. This whole route in general is really cool. Too bad it had to be on Wii U. Full Grown Gaming would get a second place time in 100% of 4 hours 39 minutes 41 seconds using the debug menu. But eventually, playing on Wii U became too much of a hassle. Very frequently, he would experience soft locks and game crashes that just didn't happen on other versions. And so, 100% on Wii U, even with a faster route, was dead. The text overflow debug menu era was honestly one of the darkest times for the Majora's Mask community. Many runners took a break from running Majora's Mask to run other games, while others just stuck to playing on Wii the actual competitive platform, but you couldn't help but feel jaded. Hell, some people went as far as to speedrun on Wii Virtual Console using a cheat code that actually mapped the D-pad to the controller. It wouldn't count as an official run on the leaderboards, but at least it was actually tolerable. Still, you couldn't help but wish that Wii Virtual Console could be as fast as Wii U, and that something else could just be found to completely obsolete the Wii U once and for all. It was one thing that the Wii U was such a horrible version, but we can't forget how boring the debug menu made runs now. The debug menu was a blight that was killing the game, and the once intense competition grinded to a halt. It would take something big to save Majora's Mask speedrunning from a terrible fate. Thankfully, that time came much sooner than anyone had anticipated. On October 10th, 2019, Glitches and stuff would discover stale reference manipulation, the most broken glitch in Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. I've explained SRM in some previous videos, so I'll keep it brief. When Link carries an object in the game, Link's XYZ position and facing angle values are copied onto the object so it gives the illusion Link is actually carrying it. However, by performing certain glitches to unload that object without breaking the pointer that copies Link's positional and rotational data to the object, those values are copied onto whatever fills that empty slot in memory. It's very similar to cloning in Mario 64, but SRM is way more powerful. It could transform the properties of various actors, such as where a grotto may take you or what item you get from a treasure chest. It can even change the entire function of certain actors, and even at its most powerful, write and execute arbitrary code. Long story short, SRM is much more broken than using text overflow to access the debug menu, and it worked on every version of the game. In November 2019, Vash, Exodus, and others would use SRM to achieve Moon Warp, 
the holy grail of Majora's Mask speedrunning. By using SRM to change the properties of the owl statue in Southern Swamp, you could spawn Link into the moon upon loading up the save file and fight Majora. This was not only faster than text overflow, but completely removed the need to run on Wii U. Over the following year, SRM would pioneer new faster routes for most of the major categories, including faster moon warps, credits warps, and a really cool 100% route that brought back the Sun Song. The categories on the leaderboard were no longer split between platforms, but rather no SRM and SRM variants. For a few months in 2020, 100% with SRM was incredibly competitive, with several runners competing for world record. The route was actually really cool, and it was fun to watch for a bit. Gradually, SRM's popularity fell off a cliff, as more powerful applications of the glitch were discovered, leading to 100% routes constantly changing, discouraging many runners from sticking to running it in the long run. However, SRM was much more widely accepted than Text Overflow, because people just hated running on Wii U that much more. These fears resurfaced in September 2020, when a new application of SRM allowed runners to wrong warp anywhere in the game by manipulating where grottos would take you when entered. Many runners speculated that these wrong warps combined with text overflow debug menu would make Wii U the fastest version for 100%. To ensure that their worst fears weren't realized, in October 2020, a private vote was held between select members of the Majora's Mask community by the moderation team on whether to continue allowing using the debug menu in speedruns. Two weeks later, it was announced that the debug menu was officially banned from the leaderboard, just so no one could set a precedent by getting a world record on Wii U. While this decision may have improved the quality of life for Majora's Mask speedruns, this ruling was quite controversial, especially considering that it was a private vote that many people in the community were excluded from and it was clear that people just wanted Wii U out of the picture. This drew heavy criticism within and outside of the community, which many people began to villainize as a shadow government. Needless to say, things got ugly, and following the shadow government drama, the entire community moderator team was replaced. Despite the circumstances around the vote, the debug menu remains banned to this very day. Over three years have passed since the debug menu was banned, and in that time, things have been looking up. After admittedly a couple slow years with SRM's decline in popularity, present day competition in non-SRM categories such as any percent no major glitches and 100% no major glitches have been very hot recently, especially with some cool new routes, tricks, and the return of runners like Ennop who previously quit years ago. If you would like to learn more about how awesome Majora's Mask speedruns are in the current year, I highly recommend checking out some recent videos made by Jake ZSR and Majin Phil for more details. Majora's Mask speedrunning is more exciting than ever, while the dark age of the Wii U, debug menu, and shadow government drama remain as a mere memory as we approach the dawn of a new day. Special thanks to Jake for once again helping me with researching this video. I've linked his channel in the pinned comment below, so go check him out. Also special thanks to CD for editing today's video. And thank you for watching, and remember to shoot for the moon.